Greetings, everybody, wherever you may be, and welcome to Kuru, the home of Ariane, for tonight's live broadcast of Ariane Space Flight Number 153. In the Jupiter Mission Control Building, everything is go and green. The representatives from Ariane and the European Space Program are at the posts, as are our French commentators, Pascal and Gaston, and your English team, Joshua and Stephen Hall. Good evening, Steve. Uh, good evening, Joshua, and good evening, everybody. You can follow all the events, of course, on the website, arianspace.com. During the broadcast tonight, we'll find out all about tonight's Ariane mission. We'll bring you a close-up look at the launch vehicle, the big Ariane 5, and we'll look at the launch base, satellites, and all the launch teams in Kuru responsible for all Ariane space launch operations, plus some news on the Ariane space company. You'll also learn everything you need to know about the two satellites, Stellat 5 and NSTAR C. We'll see how they're put together once they arrive here in Kuru. Statistics plus news, reviews, and interviews with the major players from the customer side and words from the passenger. And of course, the main item, the launch tonight from the space base, you'll be able to follow all the action of this truly spectacular event down through the final seconds of final countdown <coughs> to liftoff and roughly half hour later separation of the satellites. Good evening again, everybody. Eighth launch of the year for the Ariane Space Program, the second Ariane 5. We have uh, launched six Ariane 4s, the 12th Ariane 5 in the series, and the ninth commercial flight. Two men you're going to be seeing a lot of, Didier Cassé, the mission director. He's an Ariane Space person, working in close tandem with... Michel Dubren, the range operations manager from uh, CSG. The range operations manager, also called the DDO, will be calling out some of the major milestones in the broadcast tonight. You'll hear him call out the seven-minute mark and the one-minute mark. You can see by the status panels, everything is green and go. Green is the color to watch here. That means we're on time and on target. We'll get an explanation of the greens a little bit later when we have uh, just a little bit more time. The Big Ariane, four, uh, Big Ariane 5 sending up two satellites tonight. A very international launch, Stephen, with Japanese, Americans, Europeans. Yeah, that's right. With uh, We're just going to uh, have, a, have a short look at the uh, satellite preparation campaign in a moment. The launcher used for the mission tonight, the Ariane 5, 512, Based, uh, built in two parts, they call them composites, a lower composite with two strap-on boosters. You see one of them here, 600 tons of thrust. They are mated to this core cryogenic stage. The upper composite, the single engine stage with the satellites. Here we see Stellat 5 in the preparation phase here in Kourou uh, being fueled and the final checks before mating to the launch vehicle. All Here we see the mating to the adapter. These events happen in S5 building. This is S5 building. And the satellite being hoisted, ready for integration to the vehicle. Here we see an artist's representation of their footprints for the coverage of Europe, Africa, and the Mideast. Our second passenger tonight is NSTAR C for the Japanese. Again, going through its preparation, final preparation phase here in Kourou, being fueled. It's a lifetime of 10 years and also being mated to the launcher. Here we have a graphic showing the 5 meter deployable antenna of NSTAR which will provide mobile coverage over Japan. Nice shot of the launcher on the pad. It's a clear night. The weather this week has been a bit strange. It's been a little rainy off and on, which it shouldn't be because we're supposed to be at the end of the rainy season. But the sun came up this morning in a clear, clear sky. We're going to go now to the latest news from the Arian Space Corporation, where things are always coming up. Power. 
Ariane Space's last launch, another smashing success. Flight 152 went up on June 5th, delivering an Intelsat 905, the 21st Intelsat launched by Ariane. Two new contracts were announced by Ariane on 19th of June for SES Americom. The company has won eight of the 11 commercial contracts on offer since the beginning of the year. Jean-Yves Le Gall was named on June 7th as Ariane Space CEO. Today we have an Ariane 5 launcher to bring to maturity. This will be done next autumn with an increased capacity launch vehicle. Secondly, like any other company, we have to keep up renewing our commercial strategy since the environment is constantly changing, and that's what we have started to do rather successfully. As since the beginning of the year, out of 11 contracts tender, we win eight of them. And lastly, of course, we have to adapt our offer by streamlining our processes with the full support of the states, with INS Pass being even more competitive, with highly motivated contractors, and this will be key to sustain our success. Development of Ariane 5's cryogenic upper stage continues. The upgrade will provide increased performance to 10 tons. Successful tests for the fueling process continued in June. The final test due later this month. Satellites for Flight 155 arrived in Kourou in May and June. Atlantic Bird 1 for UTELSAT and MSG-1, a weathersat, are due to go up on the 27th of August on another Ariane 5. On June 27th, two French government ministers paid a visit to Kourou. They toured the final integration building and got a good look at the launcher used for tonight's flight. A slightly smaller version of the Ariane 5 was given them as a present. All right. You're going to hear the DDO in just a few short seconds call out the seven-minute mark, which is the beginning of what we call the synchronized or automatic sequence. À tous de DDO, attention pour le début de la séquence synchronisée. Top à zéro moins sept minutes. All right, we are in the syn synchronized sequence, the automatic sequence, which yeah, this means what? The computers are taking over, basically. That's, that's correct. This is where the computer uh, control takes command to sequence the events and to verify all the parameters ready for launch. There are many checks to perform here, uh, pressures, uh, valve positions, electrical uh, systems. Um, all the fluids and the electrical uh, systems, a thousand and one things. That's correct, and far, far too many for uh, any manual intervention. So we uh, program this in software and the com computer will uh, uh, sequence these events. Launch a very complex affair, and of course, Arian Space wanting to make sure that all safety and security regulations are are uh, being applied. The man on the phone, Johnny de Gaulle, the new CEO at Arian Space, will be coming back to him later. You'll hear him at the end of the broadcast. The uh, these two computers are also loading the correct ignition time into the onboard computer. We'll get back to that after a short film on the launcher and satellite campaign. The launch campaign started on 21st of May with an assembly phase in the launcher integration building. We assembled the EPC main cadering stage, the EPS turbo propellant stage, the EAP solid propellant booster, the vehicle equipment bay, And on the 18th of June, we transferred the Integrity Launcher to the final assembly building. After that, the main operation was to assemble the payloads. To fit the composite and the launcher in the final phase with the two satellites under the fairing. The whole campaign lasted roughly 50 days, that is, 34 actual working days. The air quality and the environment is something, for some reason, you don't much hear about in the space business, uh, but it's on everybody's mind. We decided to remedy that. We spoke to an independent air quality expert named Olivier Lescamp, who measures the impact that the huge cloud of exhaust has on the local plant life here.
That heavy acid cloud that Olivier Scoff was talking about comes out heaviest right here. We're right behind the uh, ELA-3 launch pad for the Ariane 5. But the heavy uh, impact is rather localized, yeah? Yes, Jos. We're here at about 200 meters from the booster's exhaust, the north one. And uh, the same effect will be in the other, on the other exhaust. But here, we are just in a zone at about 500 meters uh, on 200 uh, wide, 200 meters wide, where we can see a real impact. Uh, the acid is burning the grass, but in a few weeks uh, we won't see any, anything anymore. But we're here in the heaviest uh, impact area, and at about 200 meters from here, there's nothing. We measure nothing, and we don't find any alumina or acid. We will hear more from Olivier Lescamp on the environment a little later on in the broadcast, but for now, we want to take a look at these green status panels. You see they're still green. Stephen is going to give us an explanation. Yes, the green status boards that you see is a visual representation of the uh, many elements that need to be in place uh, prior to uh, ignition of the engines and liftoff. There are many, uh, there are many other uh, stations outside of Jupiter feeding in, in into uh, the, the staff here, who in turn report uh, into the DDO, who will make the uh, final call. For example, the uh, spacecraft uh, that it's uh, in its launch configuration, it's powered, its, uh, its receivers are powered, and the downrange tracking stations and its control network are also up and available for the mission tonight. We have roughly some 1,500 people working on the space base. Our cameras are here, but there are people in different services all along. There are 50 square kilometers, kilometers of the space base, roughly. And they send all their information here to the two men that you saw in the beginning on the center of your screen, the uh, DDO and the mission director. The launcher on the pad right now was rolled out yesterday, and we're going to go to some shots now that were taken of the rollout, which which took place yesterday. Rollout takes place uh, rather late in the game, Stephen? Uh, yes, it does. Um, unlike Ariane 4, where we uh, uh, made the spacecraft uh, at the pad, here we made them in the final assembly building and rolled the vehicle on the launch table on the twin uh, rail tracks that you see there. And that's towed uh, by, its, a, that's towed by, by a one truck. By one truck uh, for its uh, approximately one hour journey out to the uh, launch base. We have two such uh, tables in order to meet uh, service our launch grade. Now that launch table uh, is one of the world's heaviest structures. It I'm is. Told. The table itself is uh, approximately 800 tons. And with the fully loaded Ariane 5 vehicle, this takes the uh, total weight up to just over 1,500 tons. DDO is going to call out the one minute mark uh, in just a minute. DDO, attention pour moins une minute. Top, moins une minute. All right. We're into the final 60 seconds of the final countdown. Yes, and at T0, what we'll, you will see the uh, Vulcan uh, main engine of the core stage ignite. Uh, that will burn for some seven seconds whilst all of the parameters are checked that we have stable and full thrust. And at that point, uh, the command computer will ignite the solid rocket boosters, which will be liftoff. So we have uh, H0, you light the Vulcan engines to resume, and then you check them out, and then you light the boosters. That's correct. All right, the boosters are the point of no return. Once the boosters are lit, they are. there's no turning back. There's no hold down in this system. Right. We're going to let the DDO Don't call out. Tous de DDO, attention pour le final. DDO will call out the final 10 seconds. You see Ariane warming up there. Enjoy Dix, the liftoff. We'll nine, be back. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Un top. <coughs> Allumage. Allumage OAP. Décollage. Début de basculement. Oh, 
Oh boy, some spectacular shots of Arian roaring off the pad. This is from a camera which is a little closer than we are, about two miles. Thundering up into the clear night, you saw and heard, no doubt. Trajectoire nominal. The D DO says everything is normal. You got the core cryogenic stage burning now Et with the two boosters. The boosters each burning 600 tons of thrust. That's 20 times the power of the Ariane 4. Passage de la Pédine Max. Ariane rose vertically for about six seconds, then started to pitch over at about 17 seconds. The boosters provide 90, 90% of the thrust for the Ariane. The core stage alone could not provide the liftoff, is that right? No, that's correct. And, and the combination at the moment is consu consuming some four tons of propellant per second. And at the 49 second point as we went through, we went through max dynamic pressure or Mach 1, the speed of sound. In another 50 seconds, it will have passed Mach 4. And 150 seconds into the flight, it will be traveling at Mach 7. All right, we are well underway. The booster is going to burn for about two minutes. We should shortly be having the DDO's confirmation of burnout. And then uh, Les paramètres sont nominaux. jettison. That looked like burnout there. Well, while we're waiting for the burnout, give us a rundown of what we're seeing. Well, there, there we, we see, are. We see there the we thrust decay. And the, and the separation of the solid rocket boosters. So, so we're still following the launcher at this at at this altitude, 76 kilometers from the na with the naked eye, so that you can see what the visibility is like. It's quite spectacular. All right, give, give us a rundown on the left. Okay, on the left we have the uh, trajectory, which is the uh, the designed uh, flight profile for tonight, and the cursor. And the cursor you can see coming up to the point, if you can read it, it's rather small. Sepkoff, that's separation of the fairing. That'll be coming up in another minute or so. Yes, from the, we can separate the fairing at this point. It's fulfill, it will have fulfilled its function of protecting the satellites from the, during the atmospheric uh, part of the flight. And also we can uh, uh, reduce the mass by some two tons, uh, the mass of the fairing being carried into orbit. Largage de la coiffe. All right, there is the fairing separation. Should have an animation coming up. Here it is to give you an idea of what happens up there. As, as, as Steve said, it's blown away and uh, we drop what? How many kilos? How many hundreds of kilos? 2,000 kilos. It's considerable. The EAPs, the boosters, are uh, dropped in the Atlantic and sometimes recovered. We have the capability of recovering the boosters but uh, for inspection, uh, but tonight we will not be doing that. All right, the fairing jettison coming after uh, the boosters when, as Steve said, no longer uh, atmospheric effects. All these separations of boosters and fairings and the other stages are triggered by the onboard, the onboard computer, which uh, determines when the time is right. Uh, the DDO just called everything normal on board. Everything normal, four minutes and some into the launch. You can see on the left, we're 134 kilometers up, and we're going at 277 kilometers per second. Speed we need to inject a satellite is? For tonight's, tonight's mission, the, the initial uh, uh, first separation will be at about 8.7 kilometers per second. That varies with, with the mission. Very slightly with the mission profile we're flying. Depending on, I imagine, the mass of the satellites and the mass where and we're the, going. And, the, and where we're going, yes. All right, everything nominal, says the DDO. Coming up on five minutes into launch in positive time, 143 kilometers up. You may have noticed uh, on some of the shots of the fairing before the logo that said Ville de Charleroi. There it is, the Ville de Charleroi. That's the city of Charleroi in Belgium. And Charleroi is sponsoring the launch tonight. The city is part of something called the Community of Ariane Cities, or CVA. The Community of Ariane Cities was formed in 1998. It's a nonprofit group, and they assist the economic, cultural, and ed educational development of the cities and the people who contribute to European space activities. Now, how do they do that? Well, they 
emphasize the importance of space and space applications and the organized conferences and courses for students and workshops and things. One of the founding members of the, uh, is the city of Charleroi, and Ariane Space's idea is to have one or two of these sponsored uh, launches per year by a city. Some of the other cities, Bremen in Germany, Toulouse in France, Torino in Italy, Evry, which is the Ariane Space headquarters, of course, also CVA headquarters, Kourou, Cayenne, and Cinemari here. 30 members, and uh, we wanted to mention our friend Eckhart Weinrich. Indeed, I'd like to say good evening to my colleague Eckhard Weinrich, who's in Charlois for this evening's launch. And uh, the mayor, the Burgmest, they call him, Mr. von Gampel, who is here tonight as an honored guest, and he'll be taking the he microphone when, when we are finished and addressing uh, his fellow citizens out in Charleroi, who I believe are gathered at the town hall. So hello to them, and stay tuned after we leave the air to hear Mr. Van Gempel. Everything is all right on the curve. We're coming up toward the end of the lower composites mission, the first half of mission. Flight number 153 will be soon over. The second half will focus with the EPS, the single stage, more on the satellites. The first stage focused more on getting us up, getting us up there. Yeah, just a word about the uh, trajectory plot that you see there, where you see the altitude is uh, decreasing. In fact, we trade altitude for velocity uh, to make best use of the energy uh, available and uh, that we require for tonight's in in injection. Yeah, it looks like we're going, it, it, it does look like we're losing altitude, but... Uh, uh, we are very slightly, but the, uh, we're trading that for velocity and we're using the Earth's gravity to uh, accelerate the vehicle. So we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't worry. You see the cursor climbing up to the point, if you can read that in small letters, SEP EPC. EPC is the core cryogenic stage, which is due to burn out at about nine minutes, almost at about plus 10 minutes, roughly. And you should hear the DDO calling that out. So we're taking, is it, is it fair to say we're taking a step back to go two steps forward with this procedure? That is, yes, that, that, that is in the case what we're doing, but uh, we, we, gain, uh, we gain tremendously uh, with the, uh, the gravity, Earth's gravity to accelerate the vehicle. Par la station de Natal. All right, the GDO has just called out acquisition by our first downrange tracking station at Natal. That's over the border in Brazil. We begin at launch time with uh, two stations here in French Guiana, one at Kourou. Il reste 70 secondes de propulsion APC. And what, did he say 70? No, he, he's calling out the uh, very short time to go to... Tous les paramètres à bord sont nominaux. Everything is normal on board. So, uh, Alusa, you see the... from Lockheed. The, uh, little, excuse me. The uh, downrange tracking stations are set up. It's Tim Hemke from uh, Orbital. Ariane 5's trajectory is derived to, is devised, I should say, to ensure that the launcher is always visible from the station that's tracking her. Uh, fin de visibilité par la station de Kourou. All right, we have now lost, just for another second on the, uh, on the tracking stations, we're beginning to be, tra we were, in the beginning of the launch, we were tracked by Kourou. There is some overlap, we're tracked at the same time by two stations at Natal. We have just lost the, lost the signal from Kourou, which is quite normal. We're tracked only now by Natal. Il reste de propulsion APC. 15 seconds left of fuel to burn in the core stage, the GDO has said. And you'll hear him call out the extinction. Extinction APC. There it is, extinction of the core stage. Separation APC. Separation of the core stage. Allumage APS. <laughs> he was waiting for that one. <laughs> we, the uh, beginning of the burn of the second stage of the EPS. Roughly what it looks like up there. The EPC, a little, a few words on the EPC or the EPS? Uh, the EPS, uh, yes, this is the uh, upper stage with uh, storable propellants, nitrogen tetroxide, which is the oxidizer, and monomethyl hydrazine, which is the fuel. This will burn for approximately 1,000 seconds. It's 10 tons of propellant. 10 tons of storable propellant. The, f the figure is the same for the third stage in the Ariane 4. That also has 10 tons, but it's liquid hydrogen and oxygen, like in the bottom stage of the Ariane 5. That's correct. And we're going to talk, I think, a little later about uh, the development uh, upper stage 
uh, for Ariane 5. Tous les right. paramètres à bord sont nominaux. So stay tuned, folks. Everything norm normal and nominal. The EPC, in case you're wondering, re-enters the atmosphere and will disintegrate and finally Project fall into the, into the Pacific. It makes about a half a turn around the Earth. It finally falls into the drink. Uh, in the Eastern Pacific, Pacific, yes. Now I see on the left, bottom left, we're still gaining altitude. The A, 123 kilometers. And our speed is increasing slowly so we're going we're going back up from the we're, we're now we're well uh, back on the, on the on the ascent track at over 200 kilometers everything everything is normal and nominal you can see the jupiter building here there's uh, really two parts to it which is like the two parts of the ariane 5 there's the uh, technicians and the people from ariane kness and the european space agency in the fishbowl at their posts and behind them the direction from where the camera is shooting are the VIPs, the invited guests, come down to enjoy the launch. Certainly treated to a fine show tonight. 221 kilometers up, approaching 8 kilometers per second, and the speed we need to inject the satellite was? Acquisition par la station de télémesure d'ascension. For the separation of uh, Stellat, the first spacecraft, it will be approximately 8.7 uh, kilometers per second. All right, that's the figure to watch, folks. We're now picked up by our second tracking station. We've lost the Natal signal, as you Tous see. Nominaux, la the Ascension Island station, a former NASA station, now it's the UK, your home nation, excuse me. That's right. The UK island, run by, um, not the island, but the station, run by Cable and Wireless UK. And they also will send their telemetry data back in here to Kourou. Zooming in on this fellow, Mr. Dobles, from, he's the ESA representative in Kourou. He arrived here, I think, about a year ago, six months ago? No, just over a year ago, as I recall. The EPS, the only propulsion now, burning total of 16 minutes. The onboard computer, again, will shut that down when it determines the right... Uh, the right orbit has been reached. That's right. During this phase, the spacecraft, of course, uh, um, are in their powered mode and just waiting for the separation event. They're they're just riding. They're just riding. Yeah. But their their batteries are on, or their batteries are on, and their command receivers are on, so that when they are acquired by their ground stations, they can talk to the satellites and uh, wake them up. But they're not using any of their fuel. No, yet. not at the moment. Fuel, a very precious commodity for satellites. It is indeed. The more fuel you have, the more life you have which is the purpose of the geostationary transfer orbit, and then the satellite uses its own power to get up to... To circularize that uh, highly elliptical orbit is circularized by the spacecraft uh, engines. The Ariane mission ends when it puts the satellite into transfer orbit. We're going to go back now to a part two of our talk with our environmental expert, Olivier Lescanf. Pollution is much on the minds of people in any industry, and the space sector is no exception. Here in French Guiana, we have many ways to measure how the air quality is affected by every Ariane launch. These measures are carried out by independent experts unaffiliated with the CSG. Here we have the first means we use to catch the fallout from the gases from the Ariane 5 solid boosters. These um, are small copper plates covered with silicon which let us catch all the aluminum particles and even some acid elements. We also use a basin which we put one liter of distilled water. This water will remain exposed during the launch. All the particles and gases which fall to the ground will be caught in this water. An analysis carried out in the IRD laboratory in Cayenne will let us quantify everything that has fallen to Earth on the surface, which will be spread out to one square meter. So we'll be able to know by square meters everything that falls from the combustion and gases from air in fact, thanks to the system. This machine is a simple little pump, which is programmed. We are going to program it up to 10 minutes before 8.0. It will cover the entire launch window, plus an hour or two, depending on the statistics and the wind speed we get from the weather service. 
par la météorologie. When it starts pumping, the gas will be sucked up through the small filter, which will trap the aluminum dust. And this tube will catch the hydrochloric gases. Another way we can analyze the air quality here is by using these big yellow crates. Their main advantage is that they can transmit information instantaneously. They're part of a wide detection network for air quality that we have. They're completely autonomous, and we can put them wherever we want in order to capture elements from the clouds of Ariane 5's exhaust and combustion. All this is part of an ongoing concern for pollution here at the space base. Okay, here we take a, a look at the uh, plot there again. Um, the cursor maintaining... Uh, the track of the trajectory that we're flying tonight and you'll see marked on there but again very small writing the uh, next sequence of events uh, coming up which of course will be the separation of the spacecraft the stellat first followed by the top half of the silder dual carrying structure followed by the inner spacecraft n star c this is uh where you're normally seated that's yeah, yeah. right. Um, my colleague, Alex Madambasi. I was sat in that chair for the last mission. No, what, who, 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 who is he talking to normally? You're, you're usually down there. You're talking to the customers? He's talking to the customer uh, that he has with him and our uh, office in uh, Every that uh, monitor the launch also. All right. We will be back in a moment. We're going to take you now to the f a film of the first of the satellites. Everything you've ever wanted to know about Stellat. For geostationary satellites, not all orbital locations are equally interesting. Some are even outstandingly favorable. Five degrees west, for a privileged location, an exceptional satellite, Stellat 5 which ensures continuity of the service provided by Telecom 2C is much more than just a replacement. Manufactured by Alcatel Space, Stellat 5 is the top of the range of the Spacebus 3000 B3 platform. With a mass of just over 4 tons and 10 kilowatts of power, it comprises no less than 35 transponders in KU band and 10 in C band. A highly complex, high performance unit fulfilling the requirements of flexibility, power, and versatility. It is an outstanding technical achievement, coupled with an unequal performance in adhering to the laid down timelines, because only 23 months elapsed between contract signature and on-ground delivery. This challenge was fully met by the teams of Alcatel Space and its European partners. Stellat 5 provides very high power coverage of Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Its position over the Eastern Atlantic will enable it to provide very wide-ranging connections between the east coast of America and the gates of Asia or the Indian Ocean. Most French-speaking communities will therefore be accessible in a single hop. Stellat 5 provides almost 200 interconnect options, thus making it possible to widen the offer of existing radio and TV programs and to create new ones. Above all, it will be the first European satellite to open up the high-speed two-way internet market with small diameter antennas. 100% satellite internet at last becomes a reality for all businesses, access providers, and private individuals. And so for every community in this vast area, new networks open up, new markets, and new worlds. New markets and new worlds, right. We have a film on the NSTAR satellite coming up in about uh, a minute or so, but before we do, the moment you've all been waiting for, Michael Callery, who's also your colleague, 
the moment you've all been waiting for, the quiz question for tonight's launch. Area and Space quiz question, are you ready, folks? Question number 153. Before tonight's launch, how many satellites has the Ariane family launched for Japan? I repeat. Question number 153. Not counting tonight's launch, how many satellites has the Ariane program delivered for the Japanese? We'll give you the answer in just a minute, but before we do, we want to go to a little more detail about Stella. Stella 5. It's called 5, not because it's the fifth in the fleet, of course, it's actually the first, but because it's going to five degrees west, which is where Telecom 2C was. And uh, Telecom 2C is at the end of its life. We've just been picked up by Malindi. Now, where, where's, where's Malindi? Malindi is on the east coast of Africa in Kenya, and it's the final uh, station in our chain uh, for tonight's launch. So it will stay with the vehicle uh, through the end of the mission. Right. We're going to go now to our film on NSTAR, and we'll be back with more details on Malindi. Orbital Sciences Corporation, one of the world's foremost space companies providing innovative, reliable, and affordable space infrastructure products. Satellites and space systems, space launch boosters and suborbital launch vehicles, space technical services, and advanced space systems. Orbital Space Systems Group is the leading provider of small and medium-class satellites, having delivered 90 spacecraft since 1990. And with our family of stars, small geocommunication satellites, Orbital has emerged as a major competitive force in the geocommunication satellite market. The star platform is the right-sized answer for direct-to-home television broadcasting, cable television program distribution, broadband data transmission, regional mobile communications, and other communication services. The Star Geo satellite platform is a lightweight 1,300 to 2,500 kilogram class spacecraft that offers a wide variety of payload options, including C, KU, S, and KA bands. The state-of-the-art Star design provides up to 4,500 watts of payload power, accommodates up to 42 transponders, and supports multiple antenna configurations. Instar C, built for NTT Docomo, continues Orbital's heritage of geocommunication satellites. That includes Indostar, built for Media Citra Indostar, and the BSET 2A, 2B, and 2C spacecraft for Japan's Broadcasting Satellite System Corporation, all based on the Star 1 platform. Instar C, along with three C band satellites currently in development for Pan AmSat, incorporates our improved Star 2 design. The 1600 kilogram spacecraft features three axis stabilization and generates over 1400 watts of payload power. Instar features two way S band mobile communications with a C band feeder link, is configured with a 5 meter unfurlable antenna, and has a 10 year design lifetime. The satellite will provide improved signal to users, better voice quality, and allow the use of smaller mobile phones for NTT Docomo customers. Orbital is proud to partner with Lockheed Martin to deliver Instar C, the newest addition to the NTT Docomo satellite family. Instar C will help NTT further its vision of providing wireless service for mobile telephony, data transfer, and maritime communications. Star Satellites the right-sized geocommunications platform, providing the reliability, affordability, and flexibility that today's satellite communication service providers demand. Orbital, the leader in small space systems. All right, I want to add just a word about Malindi. The, that's the final station over in Kenya will see the extinction of the EPS and they will see both satellite uh, separations. That's a station which has been upgraded for the Ariane 5 program, operated by our friends at the University of Roma. Correct. NSTAR, with Mr. Nagagana. NSTAR program goes back a ways, goes back to 1990, 1991. The original two contracts, A and B, uh, launched, of course, by Ariane. These took over from something called CS, 
I don't have too much information on them. All I know is that they were made available to NTT by the by the government of space agency, NASDA. But the original NSTAR contract was a different, ordered directly by the phone company, if I'm not mistaken. Japan and uh, the Europeans are have been engaged for a number of years on, on numerous uh, collaboration, cooperation programs. Uh, French, you Japanese... 15 seconds. 15 seconds of uh, EPS burn, did he say? Excuse me, I didn't catch that. Coming up to the EPS burn, Francois Bouzitat, Arian Secretary General. We're waiting for the EPS. Extinction EPS. There it is, the EPS burnout. Alcatel Chair, Pascal Suiz. Okay, with the extension of the EPS uh, system, it's, we're now going into a SCAR sequence. This is the attitude control uh, system on the upper stage, which will orientate the stage to the appropriate attitude um, pointing for the separation of the Stellat 5 spacecraft. There's a whole series of maneuvers that has to go on before, during, and after uh, separation of the satellites, right? That's right. There's a number. There's the first sequence for the uh, separation of uh, Stellat 5. Then we will reorientate the stage to deploy the upper part of SILDA, that's the dual carrying structure. And then again reorientate for the correct uh, pointing attitude for the N-star separation. And of course we do this to ensure that there's no recontact between the different bodies on their trajectories towards their transfer orbit. Everything normal on board, says the DDO. This is something that we have to do for each double launch, obviously. There's, you don't have to do this for a single launch, or do you? We still do it for the single launch to move the stage uh, off the same track as the spacecraft. The EPS stage now, with having depleted its propellant, uh, is a mass of 1.2 uh, tons, plus, of course, the SILDA and the spacecraft. We're coming up on stellar separation. And uh, our speed is eight. Everything is still nominal on board. We're 1,970 kilometers up and 8.34 8 kilometers per second. And the figure is, again, 8 point what for speed? The is about 8.6. 8 .6. So we're, we're approaching. On my plot here that I have in front of me. We are approaching. I started to say about... Uh, French-Japanese exchanges. Are we dropping uh, the um, a lot of exchanges, especially in Earth observation, and in uh, not only that, but uh, the space agencies in their respective countries working on new research on new launch systems. And of course, Ariane Space opening a Tokyo office in 1986. I think Japan represents maybe 10, 11, 12 percent. 10 to 12 percent, yes. Of the uh, business for the Ariane family. Yeah. Yes. Just to go back to that speed. Uh, in fact, we have uh, uh, two velocities. I am reading from the from the plot here about 8.7, which is the inertial velocity measured from the uh, vehicle, and then there's the relative velocity or the true velocity that we're looking for, and that's what you're seeing on your screen. Mise en spin. Now what's that? Sp spin up? We're spin up, ready to uh, deploy the Stellat 5, the final part of the uh, SCAR sequence. Should be in 20 seconds or so. You'll hear the DDO call out that as well. Separation Stellat. Separation of Stellat 5. There it is. There's the first good news. Separation of the first satellite looks something like this. Very good news for the France Telecom and the Stellat people. But, of course, de la and here's the beginning of your orientation maneuvers that you were talking about. Of course, the night is not over. We have another passenger due to be separated in about seven minutes. But before that can happen, there's more SCAR operations. Before that, we have to go through the, uh, the orientation sequence uh, such that we can uh, separate the upper part of uh, the SILDA, the dual carrying structure that we talked a little bit about earlier. You, Stephen, started uh, earlier in the broadcast to talk about the upgrades to the Ariane 5. Do you want to get back to that? 
Yes, we have another a number of upgrades to the Ariane 5, which will be the, the next version, the ECA version, of the cryogenic upper stage. The principal uh, modifications are the uh, additional loading of uh, propellant into the solid rocket boosters. We have a new core stage engine, the Vulcan 2, a further development, which has uh, increased uh, flow and thus increased uh, thrust some 20%. Then the significant part is the uh, cryogenic upper stage to replace the EPS that we've been flying tonight. That will use the same heritage from the Ariane 4, in fact the same engine, HM7. And we will have redesigned, we have redesigned tankage um, in order to take that up to the 5.4 meters uh, diameter of the uh, Ariane 5. So the ECA, they say perhaps this year, uh, the first flight? The first flight is due uh, a little later this year. Um, that will take the performance up from six plus tons that we have uh, with the current version to uh, approximately 10 tons. And c can we look forward to a first launch with 10 tons? Uh, we can indeed. Well, that's very good news. All these uh, improvements providing a bigger, wider range of mission possibilities for, for the Ariane family? Well, that's right. In fact, we have a further development, the ECB stage, which is um, a, gr a, growth, a growth in the tankage uh, of the cryogenic upper stage and the uh, um, reignitable uh, engine uh, such that we will be able to fly uh, multi-missions on, uh, uh, on the same flight. That is, we'll be able to uh, have a coast phase and then reignite the engine and make uh, plane changes or take uh, the second uh, spacecraft into a different orbit. The uh, EC, ESCB you're talking about, due, due to fly in 2005, 2006? 2006, uh, yeah, the ECB. Yeah. The, uh, the original, the, uh, that engine is going to be called the Vinci, Leonardo da, da Vinci engine. Yes. Yeah. The original name for that was MESCO. Do you know that? No, I didn't. I MESCO, new tonight. MESCO, which is a French acronym. Separation Silda. There's the separation of the Silda that Stephen was talking about. MESCO, which is a French acronym for optimized cryogenic upper stage engine. I think it was a good call to change the name to Vinci, don't you think? So, sounds a little more European. A little bit more. Début de la manoeuvre d'orientation suivante. Okay, we've begun the maneuvers of uh, the SCAR sequence uh, continues for the orientation to the N-star separation uh, pointing attitude. Due in, in about four minutes. A little more on the ESCB. I'm reading here it'll carry 28 metric tons, is that right, of liquid hydrogen and oxygen compared to 14 in the SCA? That's a big, that's a big No, it's uh, uh, 10 in the uh, SCA. Uh, it's, excuse me, no, uh, 14, yes. Uh, but it's, that, that, that's a considerable jump. It's a considerable increase, yes. That will give us a performance lift to plus 12 tons. La phase de SCA se déroule normalement. This, uh, the team for the new engine being led by the SNECMA people, uh, this team comprising 14 manufacturers from 11 European countries. A lot of tests have been going on since, I think, March on the new engine, yeah? A, a great many tests um, on, on these new engines, yes. And everything going according to plan. At present, that's right. Uh, we, we run, of course, the engines well beyond their design uh, operating life uh, on the ground to simulate uh, um, the flight and uh, take them beyond... Okay, we just heard the DDO uh, calling that where the SCAR se sequence continues. Jean-Yves Legard, the new CEO whom you saw uh, earlier, uh, uh, speaking on these uh, future upgrades for the Ariane 5, said that it will allow us to guarantee launch on Ariane 5 of any pair of satellites, any double launch available. So we have the, the most modern and the most powerful launcher on the market, and he says in 2003 we should be launching three, maybe even four of the Ariane fives, ten tons, and starting from nine, from mid uh, 04, we're only going to be launching Ariane fives and ten tons. He says. Getting back to Stellat, now that it's up, the in-flight operations just before we get to separation. First acquisition will be near Perth, a city called Nyangara. Have I got that right? Nyangara. Nyangara. In about 15, 20 minutes. Four kick motor firings on the two second, fourth, seventh, and ninth orbits. Solar array and antenna deployment in one week next Friday on the 12th. Bus testing for 12 days. 
All testing payloads and bus roughly lasting four weeks, and the satellite should be in service, as Dominic Thibault, with whom we spoke uh, this week, the DG. Satellite should be in service by the end of August. With five-ton satellites and more becoming more uh, the market standard, the Ariane 5, with this capability is... Uh, you see the importance of the... Uh, yes, of the indeed. Engine. In fact, uh, we have a, a contract for a communication satellite of some 6.8 tons, so they're growing all the time. That's the... Uh, I got it right here. Hold on a minute. Is that the Thai satellite? That's for Thailand, yes. Yeah, 6.7 or something. That's a big one. Under a minute for the uh, separation of NSTAR. That's what we're waiting for. As soon as we have that, we will pass that along to you. Of course, you, hear the, you will hear the DDO call out that information. Mise en spin. It's the final operation of the SCAR sequence, the spin up. 15 seconds until satellite separation. Then you should hear the applause that you didn't hear after the. Separation and star. There you are. You heard the applause, and uh, the cigars and the champagne will be forthcoming. Uh, you can see all smiles all around. Stephen will give us the in-flight operations for NSTAR, and then we'll give you the answer to the quiz. Yes, right. the NSTAR, NSTAR C, uh, it's, uh, its initial acquisition will also be in, uh, from Australia, from Urala, in about 26 minutes from now. They'll perform three uh, uh, apogee burns to circularize the orbit, the first on the 7th of July, then the 9th, and the 11th. Also on the 11th, they will deploy their uh, solar arrays and their antennas, continue with uh, in-orbit uh, testing prior to entering service in the very near future. Roughly the same uh, sort of operation. Same, same sort of sequence, yes. Right. All right. While we're waiting for the speeches, we are going to have, I think, three or four. We'll have Pascal Sturis from Alcatel, Dominic Thibault from Stellat, Shiro Tsuda from uh, NTT, and uh, Jean-Yves Legal from Ariane maybe one or two others. Uh, the answer to the quiz, by the way, you remember the question, Air and Space, question number 153, how many Japanese satellites have we launched before tonight? Did you uh, work that out? I had a guess. I think it's about 18. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer. Well, Stephen, I want you to know, space fans, I didn't, I didn't cheat on this. I did not give him the answer, but that's the correct answer. 18 Japanese satellites. Tonight's the 19th. Con Congratulations. We have a replay coming up on uh, for the launch. We may have two or three of them, depending, but we'll let you enjoy uh, again what you saw 15 or 20 minutes ago. For anybody who got the answer, 18 Japanese satellites, uh, give us a call up here in the booth at 35863, and Stephen will send you his personal check for 153 euros. Allumage AP. Décollage. All right, there, there's the replay from, uh, of the launch. We may have another from another camera, a uh, closer camera. We may even have two more for you, depending. We're still waiting for, for the speeches. The, uh, our speakers are making their way slowly to the podium. The Ariane mission... The Ariane uh, part of the mission is over. The satellite's, of course, just beginning life. Uh, we might want to give you the breakdown by builders, Alcatel, Space Industries, of the 105 satellites built in Europe launched by Ariane. Alcatel has a big part of that with 38. And uh, Lockheed, involved in the NSTAR, of course, of the 127 North American built satellites launched by Ariane, Lockheed has built 33 of those. So we have two major players who have been successfully delivered into geostationary transfer orbit this evening. I think our first speaker will be Jean-Yves Legal. And then, as I say, we'll hear from Alcatel, Stellat, 
and NTT. The uh, 18 satellites, some, some milestones of the 18 Japanese satellites launched by Ariane. Flight 31 was uh, Superbird, goes back to uh, 1989. That was the first Ariane 44L. Excuse me, Josh, I just see uh, Johnny Eve start dressing them at the podium now. All right, we're going to hear from Mr. Legal. Mr. Legal, you have the floor. Okay, so I am uh, very proud tonight to be able to share with you one more Ariane successful flight. This Ariane 5 success is meaningful to me for it gives satisfaction to two very important and very symbolic Ariane space customers. First, let me congratulate the Stellat company, which was created just a little more than one year ago. It is very exciting for our company to support a newcomer in this business. So, welcome to Stellat, long life to Stellat 5, and congratulations to Alcatel Space, which built it. The second payload lifted tonight, and Star C, was built by Orbital and Lockheed Martin for the Japanese operator NTT Docomo. We know very well these three companies for having worked with them many times in the past and none of these three can be qualified new players in the business. I wish you as well the best for your new satellite. But tonight is another big achievement for our company, as it is our eighth flight since the beginning of the year and the 12th Ariane 5 launch. This impressive track record is probably one of the main reasons why we have been selected eight times this year, eight times, by the customers' community out of the 11 commercial launch, launch contracts awarded so far worldwide. Eight on 11, the last one being Atlantic Bird 1, which was announced today. This performance is really the market acknowledgement of our commitment to providing the best service available. As the reliability of Ariane 4 made our reputation in the past, so Ariane 5, one more time demonstrated accuracy, has become the industry benchmark. As we celebrate tonight's success, please let me draw your attention to all the people who take taken part in it. There is an old proverb saying that success has a thousand fathers and defeat is an orphan. I am not going to discuss the second part of that sentence, but as far as tonight's success is concerned, I know we owe it to the different teams that have been involved in the campaign here in Kourou. People from Alcatel Space, Lukid Martin and Orbital, as well as the CNES and ISA launch teams, and of course, Iron Space and its uh, industrial partners. I know how much energy they have spent in order to meet the launch date that was required by your customers, and I would like to thank them warmly for that. Let me finish this uh, little speech by praising all our friends watching uh, us tonight from Belgium. As you have seen on the images, the launch vehicles was uh, named for the first time after a European city involved in the Ariane activities and belonging to the community of Ariane Cities program. Charleroi was chosen for this first vehicle to honor the citizens for this, from this city where our shareholder, Alcatel Etka, has its facilities. It is a great pleasure to greet here in Kourou the mayor of the city. Welcome, Mr. Van Gompel. And I hope you enjoy the show out in Charleroi. One last word to tell you the next Ariane launch will be again an Ariane 5, carrying Atlantic Bird 1 and MSG 1, and we will meet again here in Jupiter on August the 27th. Now, let me wish you at Stellat and NTT Docomo all the best with your new sat satellites. Thank you for your attention, and once again, my congratulations.
Bonsoir à tous. Je suis uh, Good evening, très everyone. Uh, well, I'm most happy to be uh, here with you tonight to celebrate another uh, area and successful launch. So my first words uh, will be words of thanks. First, I extend all my thanks to Arian Space for having placed into transfer orbit uh, Stellet 5. It comes to prove once more the high reliability and robustness of Arian Space Services. Also, I would like to thank our customers, Stellat and France Telecom, which have entrusted us with the production of the satellite and its delivery and positioning into orbit. Now, beyond ensuring uh, the continuity of Telecom 2C services that uh, Alcatel uh, Space contributed to, uh, Stellet 5 will in turn allow us to develop numerous new applications, particularly internet-related applications. Now, our work is not completed yet. It's not over as we're still left with uh, positioning the satellite into its final orbit with the support of CNES team members. I would also like to extend my thanks to all of the Alcatel teams which participated in the launch, working both on the satellite and on the launch campaign. About the satellite, well, let me remind you that it was delivered within 23 months, which is a very short time for that humongous uh, task. Our teams are operating in Cannes, Toulouse, Valence, but also in Belgium, Alcatel Etka in Charleroi, the city we just talked about, and also in Spain, Alcatel Espacio. I'd like to say a warm hello to all of uh, Alcatel uh, staff members watching the video transmission from their sites in all these occasions, locations. Let me also take the opportunity to say hello to Alain Ben Susan and uh, really um, all my best to uh, Knaus and their guests. Now, for each Aryan launch, uh, Alcatel uh, team members participate in the uh, range operations campaign. Also, we uh, take part in the positioning into orbit for the satellites. I share the joy of Entity Docomo team and uh, of the contractors Orbital Sciences and Lockheed Martin as the successful launch of NSTAR C is also a great success for them. Now, one of the objectives of Stellet 5 is to enable the uh, development of high throughput internet services. In my opinion, Stellet 5 is a precursor, the forerunner of a whole series of satellites that uh, will make it possible uh, to develop broadband multimedia applications. This is really uh, the drive of uh, the telecom business. Demand is definitely here, and the deployment of terrestrial networks uh, calls for demand that's not restricted to areas only uh, served by terrestrial networks, and also mobile telecommunications uh, can now be more affordable. The prices are more competitive, so whether you're a company or private individual, well, uh, soon more and more people will be able to enjoy uh, these services. And I do hope that once uh, Stellet 5 is it's in the uh, final orbit uh, position, it will be fully satisfactory to our customers to ensure all their missions. In conclusion, I'd like to emphasize that if Alcatel Space is one of the leaders in space telecom communications, uh, we also play a role and are a key player in Earth observation, scientific applications, and meteorology as well. And we're very happy 
to confirm to you that we shall participate as a prime contractor to a satellite uh, MSG-1 UMATSAT, uh, the next launch at of August. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Congratulations to Ariane Spice, to TSG, to Alcatel for this beautiful launch on Ariane 512. It has uh, met uh, the, the purpose, this uh, successful launch uh, and uh, the, um, the, the infrastructure at five degrees west. This is beautiful. This uh, launch um, is the uh, result of two and a half years' uh, work uh, to uh, finish the Stellat uh, 5 and the building of Stellat uh, Company after a short phase uh, B and formal phase of three months with Alcatel, the Alcatel teams have been able, as Pascal said, to build and to deliver here in Kuhu and 23 months of satellite in accordance with the specifications and the launch took place after um, putting together planning satellite and star and the uh, launch uh, launcher which has been uh, selected IN512 and after all we've got uh, uh, 26 months um, after the contract was signed with Agatha we managed to launch it was signed on the 5th of May we are on the 5th of July and it uh, was that this uh, launch was bound to happen on the 5th of July this uh, makes um, a reference to lots of um, nice events for people here. As well, this activity has been uh, done with a very strong performing team. Of course, there were difficulties. There was no, uh, there were a few hiccups. There were the risks uh, were complicated, and important, but they were lifted uh, gradually. And also, thanks, I believe, to um, well structured, well organized work between the um, team, Gatel, uh, the project uh, um, team, and Gatel. Uh, and the project of customers with the various purposes uh, made of uh, Eurostar um, and La Turbis, Lemino, and Stellat. And all these teams worked in uh, cooperation during these uh, two years' work. In parallel of the, to the construction, uh, special, special construction, we have uh, built up Stellat with a new operator and a synergy with Europstar in Toulouse, with Alcatel, with France Telecom Long Distance, has also um, enabled us to reach the uh, aim in time, in spite of the late starting the activities sometimes. Stellat is a commercial structure which works with its readers. I would like to mention Globcast and a very strong synergy with the uh, commercial structure in London of a Europe star. Altogether, we have implemented a product which is now commercialized at 40%. And again, thank you very much all customers who, uh, through the various distribution networks, have entrusted us and are um, ready to use um, Stellat 5. Today is a transition for Stellat with the migration of this construction phase of the phase uh, infrastructure towards the technical exploitation of the system and commercial use of it. Uh, we still, uh, the Algadel team still have, and that's quite important, they have to, um, to, um, to, have, uh, to, to carry out practical activities, the support of NES in Toulouse, that is in due time they've got to uh, place the, to have the geostationary orbit as, of the uh, five, I think that's been done because the satellite has been uh, acquired or spotted by the Artichuk station and the first uh, firing of the Apogee motor is planned for tomorrow at uh, 3.30 p.m. So Everything is nominal, everything is working fine. It's nominal, as we used to say, Brian, for the dates. Also, everything is nominal. So thank you very much again for this uh, success. Thank you to the Stella teams, uh, for Telecom, Long Distance, uh, MRD, Lowcast. Thank you to the uh, Europe Star teams in Toulouse, London, Cannes. And again, thanks to um, Ariane Spass, to CSG Alcatel, who made this success possible tonight. All, uh, everybody, all, all of them have worked to this project uh, uh, very hard. And the success tonight is the success of everyone. Thank you again. Occasion of successful launch of NSTA C and 
Star at Five this evening. It is the greatest honor and pleasure for me to talk to you on behalf of NTT Docomo. Insta C successfully launched this time is our feature satellite that we have planned for launch with a view to having our customers enjoy more reliable and convenient use of the satellite mobile communication services that NTT Docomo has been providing in Japan. I do hope that Ensta C will be a brilliant star on its orbit in space, assuming an important role of further development the mobile communications, both at home and globally. Taking this opportunity again, I would like to extend my deepest appreciation to all persons concerned who have been co co cooperating with us, the staff members at Alliance Space, France Telecom, and also to persons who have exerted all the efforts in the manufacture of this satellite at Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems and all persons at Orbital Sciences. Thank you very much, everyone. Mercy and congratulations. Well, another successful uh, chapter in the Ariane story in the books tonight. You saw Ariane 5 once again deliver the two new telecom sats, Stellat and uh, NSTAR. They're going to be making their way uh, over to their final slots, beginning their life in just a few short weeks. That makes 256 total satellites delivered by the Ariane family to date. I'm going to let my French colleague Pascal say goodnight to our French audiences before that. On behalf of everyone here in the Space Center and for my colleague up in the booth, Steve Hall, Joshua Jampa, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. Pascal? Alors, vous venez d'assister ce soir à un grand moment. C'est le huitième succès consécutif pour l'année 2002 d'Ariane Espace. Un succès qui est dû, il faut le rappeler, à l'étroite collaboration qui existe entre les pays européens par l'intermédiaire de l'Agence spatiale européenne et qui collabore aussi étroitement avec Ariane Espace et avec le CNES. Je voudrais dire merci à tous pour ce grand moment. Et nous verrons après... Au, après ce générique, le bourgmestre, M. Van Gompel de Charleroi. Merci à tous. Allumage OAP, décollage. Début de basculement.